really useful thing to be able to do in Excel is compare the values in two different cells. Uh, such a comparison is called a logical test and usually it's determined by using what's called a relational operator. Uh, the relational operators are the, the six operators that you learned in algebra equal, not equal, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. And um, they're all available in Excel and what I've done here is I put a number in A1 and B1 and then I put some questions over here that I want to answer about the relationship between those two numbers. Um, the first one is, does, is A1 equal to B1? Okay, now if I just type A1 equals B1, uh, that starts with a letter. Excel interprets it as text and doesn't do anything. Uh, so I have to tell Excel that that's a formula by putting an equal sign at the beginning. Uh, now that looks funny, but if you remember that the first equal sign is just a way of indicating that this is a formula, then what we really have in the cell is A1 equals B1. And when you have two values with an equal sign in between in a formula in Excel, Excel interprets that as basically asking the question, are these two values equal? And it'll return the value true or false, depending on their values. So I want to know, are they equal? And they're not. Therefore, Excel puts false in the cell. Uh, the next one I want to find out if A1 is greater than B1 and it's not and Excel puts false in there. Uh, then I want to check to see if A1 is greater than or equal to B1 and notice that the symbol for greater than or equal to is two keystrokes. It's a greater than sign followed by an equal sign uh, and they have to be in that order. Uh, and A1 is not greater than or equal to B1 so again I get false and I want to find out if A1 is less than B1 and it is and then I want to check to see if A1 is less than or equal to B1 and it is and then I want to check to see if A1 is not equal to B1 and notice that the not equal operator in Excel is a less than sign followed by a greater than sign um, and they have to be in that order as well they have to point away from each other rather than pointing towards each other otherwise you'll get an error message from Excel. So Excel puts logical values uh, in column B here and one thing you should notice about logical values is that they're always centered in their cells. Text like I have over here is normally right uh, normally left aligned. I've got it right aligned here. Uh, numbers are always right aligned unless you change the alignment. Uh, by default logical values appear centered in a cell and that's just another visual clue that Excel gives you to let you know that those are logical values there and not text values. Uh, if I go down to another cell here and just type in the word false um, that's a logical value and uh, besides putting it in the middle of the cell Excel gives you another clue and that is it changes it all to uppercase letters. Now what if you want the word false? By the way those are values. If you want the word false to appear in a cell start it with an apostrophe and notice it's left aligned um, and Excel did not change it to uppercase. So um, the word false as text and the value false as a logical value uh, look pretty much the same. Uh, so you kind of need to be careful when you're using them. Uh, I can't think of any time when you'd want to have true or false in a cell, in an Excel spreadsheet where they were not logical values. So basically um, whenever you use true or false, don't use quotation marks, don't use apostrophes, um, just use the words true or false themselves if you need to use them someplace in, a, in Excel. Now the real value of using all of this stuff, uh, doing these logical tests, is so that you can use them in the if function, which we're going to take a look at in the next video.